Hey y'all, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make these really awesome sprayed bleach t-shirts. Now listen, this brand, and I'm gonna show you the brand in the video, it's a very heavy duty shirt. And if you're gonna be using a thinner shirt, you may want to water your bleach down just a little bit or don't leave it on there as long. Another trick is, if you're concerned about the bleach eating your shirt, is have a bottle of hydrogen peroxide in a spray bottle near you. Once you're done spraying your bleach, take the wooden pieces off, and then once the shirt has bleached to a color that you want, because it's gonna go through several stages now, it's gonna bleach out to red, and then orange, and then yellow, and then white. Once it's at the color that you like, take your hydrogen peroxide and just hose your shirt down. That is gonna neutralize the bleach, and it's gonna make it stop. All right, y'all, let us get started. First off, what you're going to need, one of these wooden cutouts from Dollar Tree. They have all different types. You're also gonna need some of these little doohickeys. These are little wooden Halloween DIY pins. They're just little wooden shapes glued onto clothes pins, okay? Now, if you can't find these, you can look at any craft store. I mean, Michael's, well, not Hobby Lobby because they took out Halloween, but anyway, Michael's has little shapes like this. Um, Walmart should have theirs out by now. But you're going to need that and you're going to need a t-shirt. I'm making these for my kids. So I got shirts in their size. Now this shirt comes from Hobby Lobby. I really do like this brand. I've used this brand of t-shirt many different times. Now I do not pre-wash these if I'm bleaching them. Okay, because this is an old technique. This is nothing new. It's been done for years. Um, I don't pre-wash mine if I'm going to bleach them. Of course, if I'm going to tie dye them, then I pre-wash them. But um, anyway, you're going to need a shirt. You're gonna need some bleach. I'm using pure Clorox bleach. Do not use the no splash kind. Why? Because the no splash bleach, if you've ever used it, it's kind of thick. That's why it's no splash, it's kind of thick. And you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to get it through the nozzle of your spray bottle, depending on what type of spray bottle you have. But anyway, I have this spray bottle. Uh, I think this came from Dollar General. And you know, of course, you know, you just unscrew and then screw back to make a fine mist or to make like a, a heavy stream. This is pure bleach. I did not mix this down with any water, okay? Just pure bleach. So anyway, what we're gonna do is let us lose our scissors. Oh, for heaven's sake. All right, I just used a knife off camera to cut that. But as you can see, if you can see how this is not exactly flat, now, if you want this to be perfectly flat, what you can do is just get your spray bottle of water, just spray it a little bit on both sides, lay it down, and then put something very heavy on top of it, and it'll flatten it out. Now, for this technique, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. You can also use, you know, like the uh, spray-on adhesive that you get for stencils that is removable. You can use that if you want, but um, I try to not use that on fabric. Or... The way that I do it is if it's not perfectly flat, when you start to spray, don't spray at an angle like this. Spray straight down, straight on top of it so that your mist is coming, you know, straight down and not at an angle. Because if you're shooting it at an angle, you see like where it's raised up here, it's going to go under that. And you're not going to get like a very crisp image to begin with, but that'll just make it bleed worse if you spray at an angle. So this, I forgot to tell you, <laughs> I about forgot to tell you. This hole, I see people making these and they leave these holes. Why, why are you doing that? I don't, I don't get that. But anyway, I have here some painter's tape, if I can get the end of this peeled off. But anyway, I'm just going to take a little bit of this tape and I'm going to tape over the hole. Just need a little piece here. Just to tape over that. There we are. Okay, and cover that up. Now for the little bats, of course, I'm going to take them off of the uh, little clips here. I wish I could have found the kind without the clips because this is gonna be a pain in the behind to take off because they're glued down, but I'll take those off here in a second. It's okay, because here in a minute, we're gonna go outside and spray this, okay? But for your shirt, let's lay this here. You always wanna take a piece of cardboard and, ooh, Moss, <laughs> take some cardboard and put inside the shirt like this. That keeps the bleach from bleeding through to the back. It's okay if the bleach 
bleeds through and it's a design something like this where it doesn't really matter you know if you see it from the front or the back but if you're using lettering or words and then your bleach soaks through then you're going to have the word on the back of the shirt that's going to be backwards and it's not going to look very good okay so you just want to take some cardboard like so and i have another piece that i'll put down here once i get it outside and start spraying but anyway Let's take everything outside and we're going to hose this baby down. All right, so I'm doing a voice over here. I am outside and it looks like I'm using a lot more bleach than what I actually did, but I wanted to make sure that around the cutouts was really bleached out and then like those rougher looking lines are kind of like on the edges and on the sleeves. But anyway, once you spray the bleach on there, let it sit only about two or three minutes and then, you know, take the wooden cutouts off. This here is after about 10 minutes, and I made a boo-boo there, but it's okay. I'm going to color that in with a black Sharpie marker here in a little bit. But I let the bleach sit there for a good 15 minutes. These shirts are nice and thick. I'm not concerned with the bleach eating through them. If you're worried about that, like I said at the beginning of the video, just use your peroxide. This is about 12 minutes after. And like I said, I let it sit for 15 minutes. So then I'm going to take the wooden pieces off and then let's take a look at the final product. And this is it. This is after the bleach had set for 15 minutes. Then I soaked them in some cold water. I rinsed them with cold water by hand. Then I just let them sit in some cold water for a few minutes. I wrung them out and then I washed them and dried them in the washing machine and dryer as normal. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you would, give the video a thumbs up. Click subscribe, check me out on other forms of social media, the links to all of which will be in the description box down below, and I hope to see you all next time.